Good morning, Acton, and welcome to Java with John, hosted by Town Manager John Mangirati. Java with John streams every Friday morning at 10 a.m. on Acton TV's YouTube channel. You can also listen live on the radio at 94.9 FM. Tune in weekly for important information from the Town Manager, Health Department, and Council on Aging, as well as a variety of special guests. Residents can contact us with questions or comments at 978-929-6611 or email manager at actonma.gov. Good morning. Welcome to the Drive with John program. It's March 19th. I hope everyone had a good St. Patrick's Day earlier this week. Uh, we have some uh, guests this morning that are going to talk about some important things happening in the community. Uh, I'd like to in introduce them quickly. Uh, we have Sharon Mercurio. Council and Aging Director, Cheryl Ball, Public Health Director, Heather York, uh, Director of Acton Nursing, uh, Mike Oraculo, a detective with uh, Police Department, our Family Resource Officer, and Marty Abbott, our uh, in the Assessor's Office, who's going to talk to us about uh, tax relief and other exciting things from the assessing uh, world. So the uh, this has been a, a challenging week. Uh, nationally, there's been some incidents that happening in other parts of the country that really uh, we're very concerning, and I think that over the last year, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, race and racism, and and I think it's something that we need to continue to discuss as a community and and how it impacts people. And uh, we have a, a lot of uh, we have an Asian uh, community in Acton, and I know in speaking with some people this week that uh, what happened in Atlanta was very troubling um, for for people, including me. And so I think it's something that just reminds us all that we need to continue to find ways to be compassionate and care about each other and, um, and try to help people when um, they're feeling uh, unsafe and uncomfortable. Uh, but in terms of what's happening here locally, uh, the budget process is moving along. Uh, we're charging forward with a town meeting planned in June. Uh, there's a big presentation March 29th of our 10 year capital plan. I, I, I encourage you to check that out. It'll probably be about an hour presentation and we're gonna dive into the details of this 10 year plan that we've put together, talking about the investments we wanna make in the community. And then we'll uh, have a discussion with the public and the board about any feedback uh, on the following week, April 6th, which is a Tuesday night, is a budget workshop, which is a joint meeting of the board of selectmen and the finance committee at that meeting each department will have their time to speak to the boards and talk about the services that they provide. And I think people are looking forward to that opportunity to get in front of the board and talk about all the services that we provide and the pride and the professionalism that we bring to uh, each department. So I'm looking forward to that night. Hope you can join us as well. It will start at 6 p.m. and it will be available on Zoom or YouTube uh, live. So uh, those are the brief announcements. Uh, other, other projects in town are moving along the fire station. We had a quick visit with that last week. That's moving along quickly and on schedule, I guess I should say. And we're actually gonna get an update on the school building project uh, later this month, but my understanding is that's moving along uh, as scheduled as well. So a lot of interesting things happening in town. Why don't we uh, go and of course, uh, we are now over a year in, in handling this pandemic as an organization and as a community. A lot of people have worked very hard to help each other and, and the community over the last few years. And many of those people are on the call here this morning. Uh, why don't we start with one of them, um, Heather, uh, for an update on where we are from a, as a, a contact tracing standpoint and cases in town. Good morning. Good morning, John. Good morning, everyone. Um, so this morning in Acton, our overall cases are at 811 since the beginning of the pandemic. There are 18 residents in isolation with a number of those of additional in quarantine. 761 residents have recovered and 32 have sadly um, passed away since the beginning of the pandemic. And, and luckily that number isn't something that increases frequently. So it stays pretty steady, um, which is a good thing, I, 
I feel. Um, so vaccines, just wanted to touch base just a little bit. Um, we are working with some other towns to hopefully regionalize to get more, get a location that's closer for our residents to get vaccinated. But in the meantime, I stress that people should really um, make an appointment. There's a pre-registration on the Mass Department of Public Health website that you can now pre-register and the state will call you um, to set up that appointment. Um, it's available for everyone. Um, I'm sure people have seen the news. Vaccine eligibility um, for most groups will be opening on Monday the 22nd for a lot of those folks that work um, in critical infrastructure, grocery stores, etc. Um, so people can pre-register to do that, which is good news. Um, so definitely get in, get your spot and get pre-registered to do that if you haven't already. And just a reminder that if you are vaccinated or in the process of being vaccinated, that you're not considered fully immune to that um, high percentage for Pfizer and Moderna vaccine until 14 days after your second dose. Um, so make sure you're still social distancing, wearing a face covering at all times. Um, because you are not protected until after 14 days. The same is said for the Johnson & Johnson one dose. It's, addi it's additional 14 days until you're considered um, fully immune or vaccinated. Um, the social distancing and the mask face covering um, orders are still in place. Um, so regardless, when you're out in public, make sure you are wearing the face covering and social distancing to keep yourself safe. Um, that's about it for me. Thank you. Thank you for the information and updates as always. Um, why don't we go to Cheryl, Cheryl Ball. Um, what's new? Hi, thank you, John. And thank you, Heather. Um, good morning, everybody. So um, just I'm going to go over some updates that the states um, put out there for us. So as of Monday, March 22nd, we are going to be entering into phase four, step one. What that includes is a 12% capacity limit for indoor and outdoor stadiums, arenas, and ballparks. Um, and then also effective on Monday the 22nd, our uh, public setting and event venues will increase from 100, uh, to 100 people indoors and 150 people outdoors. Outdoor gatherings at private residence will still remain uh, at 10 people indoors and 25 people outdoors. Additionally, you can put on your dancing shoes and you can now dance at a wedding. Um, I urge you all though, if you're going to attend a wedding to keep, you know, try to socially distance, keep wearing your face coverings, wash your hands at all times. Um, in addition to that, overnight camps are gonna be allowed for your children to attend to. Um, and then, you know, as soon as we progress from that, um, there'll be other phase four sectors that will uh, be allowed to open as well. Heather just mentioned that there's the vaccine eligibility. So the state released that new guidance. Um, so as of Monday, March 22nd, residents um, 60 and certain workers will now be eligible for the vaccine. And those workers now include our restaurant workers, our food workers, our grocery store, our convenience store, a food pantry, um, people working in transportation, uh, and public health workers, and some port system uh, workers, as well as our funeral directors. So that's a good sign. Um, then on April 5th, our residents 55 and older or residents with only one comorbidity will become eligible. On April 19th, our general public 16 and older, older will be allowed to obtain the vaccine. So we're moving right along. Um, you know, as Heather mentioned, um, if you haven't already pre-registered, you can sign up at vaccinesignup.mass.gov. And when you'll be notified when it's your turn to schedule an appointment one, at one of the mass vaccination sites. And those are currently located at Fenway, Gillette, the Reggie Lewis Center, the Doubletree Hotel in Danvers, the Eastfield Mall in Springfield, the Natick Mall, and the former Circuit City in Dartmouth. You may also use VAX, V-A-X, Finder, Dot mass dot gov to search for appointments at pharmacies, healthcare providers, and other community locations. Um, one, one last thing I'd like to, you to all to, as we're becoming into these new eligibility phases, we'd uh, like you to go on uh, the actinma.gov website and 
uh, fill out our vaccine interest form. So we know that you're um, looking to get a vaccine and we can use that list to notify you. So um, we encourage you all to fill that out and thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, a lot of changes happening uh, with what's required, uh, required and, and allowed out there. A lot of people are eligible for vaccines starting next week. So uh, things are certainly moving in the right direction. So thank you for those updates. Uh, next, why don't we go to the Council on Aging Director, Sharon Mercurio. Good morning, John. Thank you. Um, so lots continue to go on at the Senior Center. We had a, a great drive through St. Patrick's Day um, lunch and event on Wednesday. So that was nice to see people. The, the sun was shining. We had uh, Detective Araclio and uh, Stackhouse with us and Zane, of course. Uh, so always a treat. Some of the things we have coming up this week on Monday, we have a program on treating knee pain that will be at one o'clock. On Tuesday at 10, we have tips with Terry. Uh, our fabulous Terry Zaborowski, the exercise instructor, has been meeting with people throughout the pandemic via Zoom. So that's at 10 o'clock. One o'clock, we have a program on political cartoons. On Wednesday at 1.30, we have Computer Club. Thursday, we have attorney Margaret Hoag, who uh, will do, be doing one-to-one -one appointments virtually um, in the Ask the Lawyer program. And um, let's see, I just wanted to kind of reiterate, we had a, a lovely program that Cheryl coordinated with DA um, Marion Ryan earlier this week. And uh, one thing that I took away with it, you know, Mike's here to talk about scams, but just the phone calls um, during the pandemic, you know, the crazy phone calls that we're all getting, the spam calls. And, um, you know, I was answering them and saying, you know, please put me on your do not call list. And she said, you're really better off not answering those phone calls at all because it triggers if there's a live person um, picking up, it kind of triggers more phone calls. So I thought that was, a good takeaway. So I wanted to share that with folks. Um, you know, they can leave a message if it's important or caller ID, you can check and see. Um, Anita Arnum and the Vaccine Task Force have been working together um, very hard to try to get vaccine locally. And I appreciate all the efforts um, because we know seniors are, are trying to get it more locally and it's been difficult, but um, we were granted a very small um, batch of doses with Acton Pharmacy's help and the help of Senator Eldridge and Representative Govea and Sina. Um, so we will be having a link on the COA website. Um, people that filled out the interest form did have first priority. So it was first come first serve. There may be spots um, still available at the time you're, you're hearing this on TV. I'm not Sure, but um, again, I think it, it goes to fill out that interest form because when things do come up, that's that's what we rely on heavily. Um, but you can find the, the link on actoncoa.com, our website, there'll be a link to register for this small clinic. You must be 65 and older, you know, even if your group is up by the state, we, we really had a lot of um, guidelines that we need to follow for this, this upcoming clinic. So, um, and if you have questions, please give, give us a call 978-929-6652. Thank you. And I guess also just to uh, add to that, we did put out a notice earlier this week that we're still trying to make sure we've covered all the homebound um, folks in town. And so if you know of someone that's homebound and may not have access to vaccine, please make sure we know and call the Council on Aging or, or the town hotline. Uh, I'll give you that number, 978-929-6600. Um, but thank you. Uh, so a lot of news on vaccines. I just muted myself. Uh, let's, let's move over to our next uh, speaker, Marty Abbott. Marty is uh, in the assessor's office and she helps people uh, every day. Uh, with uh, understanding their taxes and, and finding them ways to uh, get tax relief. So she's going to share some tips with us this morning, among other things. Marty, how are you doing over there? Hey, good morning, everybody. Hi, I just wanted to, first of all, remind everybody the deadline for our exemptions is April 1st. So it is coming up very quickly. 
So if you don't have your paperwork or you need any help, please just give me a call. I'll be happy to help. Um, and also remember, it's 2019 tax return that we're going off of for our exemptions this year. And other than that, you know the whole spiel, what we have, but we're always trying to help. So if you even possibly think that you are qualifying, please don't hesitate to call. It takes nothing for us to go over your paperwork real quickly. We'll know right then. We have quite a few new people this year and we'd like to get a lot more. So again, April, 19, uh, April 1st is our cutoff date. So even if you get the paperwork and it's not finished to me by that date, at least I have it in-house, we'll work on it together. So our programs range from veterans, we have blind, we have hardship forms, we have a little bit of everything, and I hope if you need the help that we can help you. So give us a call, 929-6621. Send us an email. We'll get back to you, or I'd be happy to meet you outside the town hall and go over your paperwork. And that's about it. Thank you, Marty. So exemptions may not, every, everyone may not understand that, but if the bottom line is, is that if you or someone that you know is having trouble paying their property taxes, make sure they call us and make sure they call Marty because she can help you find a program that may help you uh, if you are having trouble. Uh, and, you know, the exemption, could you just explain what that is, Marty? The exemptions, they, they are income based. You do have to qualify. Every case is different. Um, you're supposed to be 65. We have people that aren't 65. The exemption is there, there's quite a few different ones. As I said, from veterans to a hardship, um, to, to a, a widow, we, we have it all. And if we don't have one that works, we find one that works. It, qualifying is number one. But a lot of times, as I said, every case is different. And sometimes it would just work for you. Might not be a full exemption, but a partial. We try to keep you in your homes. And that's what we want to keep is everybody in acting. And so that they're not scraping and feeling they have to sell their homes. And, and that reminds me of another program that I think people don't always realize is available to you or to to us and to people is deferment i mean so, some people think if i if i sign up for deferment then i'm deferring all the rest of my property taxes for the rest of my time here but you really can just you can defer it for one year or two years and then right. pick back up again afterwards right exactly right if you something happens say you needed a new roof on your house roofs are very expensive you could defer your taxes if you qualified for a year pay all your bills and then start paying your taxes again. And then when you sell your house at the end, the money comes back to the town. You don't have to pay the town back immediately. It's when you're selling your home. All kinds of other options available to people. So I encourage you to reach out to Marty and uh, to Brian and the, the principal assessor as well. Thank you for all the information, Marty. Thank you. So our last guest this morning is Detective Michael Raclio. Detective Mike Rackle helps and is a big part of our family services unit at the police department. And he's going to give us some updates on the police department in general and anything that he's working on in specifically. What's going on? Hey, thank you all for having me. Um, so the police uh, updates we have from our, our youth side of the house, our juvenile division, is that they're right now in the process of preparing the uh, youth summer camp. So we do a, a police camp for children ages 12 to 14. So if there's any family members um, interested in that, they're going to be probably soon uh, on the town's rec site and or our Facebook page that can kind of give you guidance on how to you know, sign up for that program. But something we look forward to. Um, and obviously, we'll follow all restrictions and procedures around COVID. So uh, we look forward to oh, getting some more participants. Um, last year, it was difficult. Uh, we weren't able to host it. But this year, we're looking to get that going again. Um, Zane, our comfort dog, he's back in action. So he's he's out looking for people to pat him. So I, I hope that uh, you guys contact. I'm here at 929-7543. So if uh, you see some use for him in the community or anywhere else, let, let me know. I'll pass you on to uh, John Stackhouse, who um, who lives with Zane. And, and we look forward to getting him out in the community now that he's, he's back in full swing. Um, seasonal scams are coming back, right? So we have the good weather. And we're going to see a lot more foot traffic and people are going to be knocking on doors again. And uh, in, in town of Acton, you can't solicit without a permit. So please, if anyone bangs on your door, give us a call. Let us verify that they're OK and they're supposed to be there. And, um, you know, your eyes out there is, is the best best knowledge we have of what's going on in each community, in each neighborhood. So we appreciate those phone calls. It's never a bother. Um, 
training for ACT and all of our officers are, are currently going through uh, fair and impartial policing. And that's a training myself and Officer Hammer have been conducting through our uh, 42 member department. We only have a handful of guys left and that's basically explaining um, bias, implicit um, in the unconscious mind and trying to focus on understanding our biases. So once we do, um, we can recognize that they're there and hopefully not let it control the outcome of our call. So that's, that's a big training that we're all going through now and it seems to be uh, going well. Um, and if honestly, if uh, you know, I always say this and, and I mean it, that if anyone has any questions or concerns or comments, or even would like to meet the police, come by the station. Family members aren't comfortable around police. I welcome those phone calls. I'll come out to your house. We can have a sit down. And um, we're just looking to make connections with town. And we appreciate everyone. So thank you. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you out there, out and about uh, this spring and summer uh, as things, uh, as we can be outside again. It's been, it's been a cold winter, but uh, spring is springing. So thank you for that. And um, thank you to all of our guests. And I hope everyone has a great weekend. And we'll pick up again next week. Thank you.